Hello everyone, welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to look at how to save data in an Android application. Android provides many methods of saving data and the one we're particularly interested in today is shared preferences. So shared preferences allow you to save data within the app itself and even if the app gets killed, once you restart it, that data will persist. It will still be there as it was saved. All right, let's get right into it and we can explain things more as we go along. So as you can see, I already have a layout designed. It's the, one, it's the only activity that I have in this project, this brand new project I just created. And I'm not entirely interested, rather I'm not particularly interested in layouts and designs for this tutorial. So you can design this however you like, but I'm going to link it in the, in the description below. So you can just copy and paste it into your project. All right, so as you can see, all I have is a text view, a pair of edit texts, and a pair of buttons. The edit text, the first one is prompting the user to enter their name. Here it is. And the second one is prompting them to choose a color in a hex code format. And I've already put some default text within that edit text. All right, so let's move to the, and of course the buttons just have save and clear within them. So let's move on to the Java side and start writing some code. Of course, the first thing you do after designing your layout is to connect it to your Java. So let's do that first. I'm going to say text dot find view. Sorry, text is equals to find view by id uh, dot id dot text. And I'm going to hold down control and D four times. And that will duplicate the line. And I can simply change this to name and that to name. And the same for all, all the others. And there we go. All right, so here's our use case. Our user will type data into this input field and this input field and they will press save and it will save that data in a preference, in a shared preference. And if they kill the app and come back, they should find that same data. So we'll see how we're going to use it later. So what I'll do is I will write that in a comment. It's a practice that I highly encourage. Always lay out what you're going to do. So first, to work with shared preferences, you simply create a shared preference object Next, you save the data using an editor object. And finally, make use of the data, at least in this application. The final thing we'll do is making use of the data after killing the app. Right. So let's put an on click listener on our save button to begin with. Save that certain click listener, and within it we create the on click listener object, and there it is. And what we'll do is we'll just fetch the uh, the text that's been typed into our edit texts. So name string is what I'll call my variable, is equals to text. No, sorry, not text. Name dot get text dot to string. Simple as that. Control D to duplicate, and this second one will be color string. Is equals to color. Let's set text dot dot get text dot to string. A further thing that I can do just to begin with, I will set my text view to welcome, and I'll concatenate the name, the name string rather, not the name. The name is the edit text. And finally, let's just put a log message and it will have the name string 
a space concatenated and finally the color string concatenated and we can call we can give this tag pref for preferences but now let's actually turn our attention to the shared preferences shared preferences so first we can make an object of the shared preferences and let's say shared preferences preferences is equals to get shared preferences this takes in two arguments the first one is the name so for now let's call it preferences and mode private so it's always encouraged to give your I've misspelled that preferences right so the preference object needs to have a name to differentiate it from other shared preference objects you might have in your application I've called mine preferences but it's always encouraged to name it to give it a name that's appropriate to what you're using it for so for example if you're using the preferences object to save user data login data that is you may call this authentication preference some such thing it's not required but it's highly encouraged that's the first parameter the second parameter is mode private there are many different modes in fact if i remove this and i just start typing mode you will see that there's a number you can use i encourage you to go to look at them do some research but essentially mode private means this preference object is only accessible by this application and no other so that's our step one already done we've created our shared preference object before we move on though i'm going to duplicate this i'll get rid of my first parameter and change this to get preferences oh and also the name as well so i made a different uh, another pre shared preferences object this one's called pref and as you can see the main difference is i'm using the get preferences method rather than get shared preferences so what's the difference the first one can be used by the entire application wherever you happen to be in the application if you create an object called uh, a shared preferences object and you give it the name of preferences all the data that we save right now in this object can be accessible from wherever you are in the app on the other hand this second one pref with simply get preferences and the mod private will only be accessible by this activity so if you're saving data that's only needed by this activity in this case the main activity this is the method to use all right let's get rid of it so that's our step one done let's move on to step two save the data using an editor object so here's the data i've already put it in the variables name string and color string now let's create the editor object and it is simply shared preferences dot editor i'll call it editor is equals to preferences our object that we created our shared preferences object dot edit simple as that and now what can we do with it well we can say editor dot put string and as you can see there are many different methods for all the data types you may need uh, long boolean int and so on so put string we give it a name and the name will simply be name and we give it the value which is name string and that's the pattern that's how it works you say editor dot put whichever data type so put string in this case and the first parameter is the key and the next parameter is the value so it works with key value pairs which come up again and again in android studio and in programming as a whole so this is our key and our value can be whatever we want i could even directly put muganda emo and that would be the value that shows up when you use the key of name but of course this is of no use to us we don't want to just see muganda emo all the time so instead name string all right i'll duplicate this this second one will be color and i will save the color string and finally very important never forget you must commit otherwise it won't take effect okay so having done that let's run it just to take a look at how it is operating right now and fix any errors we may have made all right there's our app running so i'm going to go ahead and type something in here i'll just type emo 
and like I said earlier the color part already has some text so let me just go ahead and click save and it changes to welcome emo as we would expect no great surprise there also let us go to our log cut here on our Android studio and I'm going to filter out my tag pref which we created in our own click listener and indeed we have emo and the color which was the default one that was already in the edit text so that's working fine so far now let's do one more thing I'm going to kill the app and let's open it again and as you can see my text has gone back to the default text which brings us to our next part now that we've saved our data how do we actually make use of it so let's go back to the application and right at the top right at the very beginning as soon as we've connected our widgets here let's immediately say text rather string text value I suppose is good is equals to preferences so actually I'll have to bring my preference object above is equals to preferences dot get string and once again key value pair so name and no data saved all right so what does this mean preferences of course refers to our preferences object and now instead of put string as we did below we want to do get string so we want to get data that's been saved the data that we saved earlier was our name and we used the key of name so you use the exact same key when you're getting it and this second parameter is very important this is a default value that you will put in case there's no data uh, saved so no data saved is a good enough string to put into that uh, to put as our default as our default text and that's what I'm going to use all right now I can say text dot set text to be text value all right I'll run that okay so once again I'll enter some text I'm going to hit save so it says welcome Uganda emo it's, it's rather large actually let me get rid of the Uganda part so save that and then immediately I'll just kill the app so kill that and let's open it again and there is our emo all right but there's a small error let me just come here so here i've said text dot set text to text value not an error really more like a ux a ux uh, issue so just for the sake of for the sake of consistency i'm going to add my welcome and text value and throw that in okay so let's type something um john and save that it turns to welcome john as we'd expect but if we kill it is the real test so we'll kill that and welcome john persists excellent so we see now how we are getting our data we simply say get string and the key and it gives us the data that we that is saved if it's there if it's not there you simply get the default just for the sake of rounding out this tutorial let's go ahead and use our other piece of data as well so it's color so you can imagine we're going to use it for some 
decorative purpose. And what I'll do is I'll duplicate this line. Let me get rid of this menu now. Don't need that anymore. So I'll duplicate this line and change this to color value. Remember, duplication is simply control D when the cursor is on the line you want to duplicate. So string color value preferences dot get string color and the default will be the exact same as we have on the XML. So this value. And that value, as you may know if you've worked with hex code before, corresponds to white. Okay, and what will we do with our color? Well, we can get a reference to our background. So I can come to my linear layout, put another attribute, and this will be ID. ID is R, uh, LL for linear layout. Come back to here, make that object as you would for any other widget. Linear layout, linear layout. And then here I can duplicate this first one and simply say linear layout is equals to find view by ID LL. And now, since I have that reference, I can say linear layout dot set background color. And then I say color dot pass color and I pass in the color value. So this will take the hex code, and it has to be a hex code for this method to work. This thing will know if you give it, for example, if you give it something that isn't right, like so, it will, it will, uh, it will fail anyway, that's what I mean. So get rid of, oops, get rid of that, and instead give it the color value. And it will, Take this hex code and turn it into our our string, our color, not our string, sorry, our color. All right, so let's run that. Okay, so I just realized, even as I was running this, that I didn't do what we did down here. So in our on click for our name, we immediately set the text. We could have done that with the color, but that's fine. For the example, it will, it, it doesn't really matter although it would have been nicer from a UX standpoint. Anyway, back to it, here it is. So I'll just enter a different name for the sake of changing it. Let's say Tracy. And then I'll change this to red. So red would be, for example, nine, nine, although that's quite deep. Let's go with seven, seven and then zero, 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 zero. So remember, it goes from red to green to blue, RGB. I'm going to hit save, and now we have to kill the app to actually see that take effect. And there's our red, right? Let's try that again. That's a very deep red. Let's, uh, Let's not bother actually putting a name. Let's keep Tracy. And let's say, let's say zero, zero, no, hash, hash, zero, zero, uh, four, four. Actually, zero, zero again and four, four. So that will give me blue now. Save this. I'll go ahead and put a name because I don't want to see this blank, this blank space. That's rather hard to look at. So Jim, save, kill the app. And when I open it up, there's my blue. Again, a really dark blue, not very nice to look at, but we get the idea, which is the data is being saved. And even when we kill the app, Jim stays consistent and the, the blue background also stays consistent because we saved our color string and that is it so one final thing that we can do and this is just a very straightforward process let's make use of our clear button so very quickly i'm going to come here i'm going to say clear dot set on click listener new on click listener and within it it's very simple i will say Shared preferences dot editor 
editor is equals to preferences dot edit and I'm going to say editor dot clear and of course any change you make to your preference to your any change you make with your editor must be committed all right right so there it is it still has the data that we had from the last time i'm going to clear and then i'll kill the app and when i return now we are back to the default setting so welcome no data saved once again ux is not very uh, ux is not a strong point in this tutorial this should have just said no data saved instead of welcome no data saved but the technique is what matters and we have seen how to save rather starting from the beginning we've seen how to create how to save and finally how to clear our shared preferences and that is really what's important so one last thing to mention clear removes everything so you'll notice that we lost we lost both our background color and our hell our welcome gym or welcome tracy whichever it was we could also use the remove method yeah so i'll just put that in a comment remove and within it we give it the key of what we want to remove that's just another option if you want to remove just one instead of all of them that said, that is enough for this tutorial. I'm going to close it there. Thank you very much.